welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how I take and edit my nail photos specifically for Instagram using the iPhone 6. Right, so when it comes to lighting, guys, I have to admit something, I'm really horrible at using artificial light. So that means I use natural light. I also find that it's super important to have good props for your nail background. For me, I'm always using this one right here. This is a white mesh blanket that I got from Ikea a few years ago. Of course, guys, use your clothes. They are a good source. So in this video, I'm going to demo how I use a blazer, this cream blazer right here. I think it, I think it goes well with the Possibly it's time for me to show you how I take and edit my photos. Let's go! I'm using my cream blazer and I'm pulling certain pieces together just to create more dimension in the background. Feel free to do anything you like to your prop. And then I just position my hand and experiment with my hand pose. I like posing with my fingers stretched out just to elongate my fingers a little bit more and give the full view of my design. Notice that the picture composition is very well lit because my light source is coming in from this side. Now I'm just switching out my hand pose and holding a part of the blazer. Make sure that your nails are in focus. I prefer to take my pictures full screen instead of the square option because there's more leeway and freedom for the different hand poses. Also, it's always good to take multiple shots so that you have a variety of images to choose from later. Now when it comes to selecting the shots that I want to edit, I go through three rounds of editing. For the primary edit, I usually just go to my photo gallery and scroll through to see which are the compositions I like best. After selecting this picture, I just click the edit option on the top right hand corner and the crop and adjust icon on the bottom. As you can see, I'm rotating the picture until I get to the upright position. Then I'm moving over to the crop function on the right and I'm just hitting square. So immediately the picture is cropped to a square. So this way I can see how my picture will look like on Instagram. And then I'm scrolling through my gallery again to see what other images I like. And then I'm going to do the primary edit all over again. I like having images of the same design with different hand poses because it gives more vibrancy to your photo collection and also it means that I have more pictures to share on my social media channels in different time zones. So for my secondary edit, this is where all the magic happens. Um, I go to my edit folder that I have on my iPhone and here I have a bunch of apps for editing pictures, videos and junk. For this, I use the app called Snapseed and I swear by this app, like seriously, I've used this since the beginning and I cannot find any other app that can replace this. So I just pull up the image that I want to edit and usually I only use the tune image and details tools. So I'm going ahead with the tune image option first. Basically, when you slide your finger vertically across the screen, you reveal the editing options such as brightness, contrast, saturation, ambience, highlights, shadows, and warmth. To adjust each option, slide your finger horizontally across the screen. Usually, I will use all seven options depending on how much I want to enhance my original image. I'm increasing my brightness to 47 and then moving down the list to the contrast option and then there's my head right there. Oops. Also, Checking up the saturation works well if you adjust the ambience together. I'm not really sure why but if I adjust the saturation alone, my fingers will look reddish in hue. So just keep adjusting all 7 components until your image looks cohesively enhanced to your liking. Adjusting the shadows will help remove the black cast around my fingers so that's how the fingers appear smoother in the picture in that sense. Going back to the main interface, I'm entering the details option and here I'm adjusting the structure which helps to provide more clarity to the intricate details. Then I sharpen the image about 30% more so just do this step sparingly because sometimes less is really more. So once I'm done, I just hit save a copy so that I can keep my original and compare it with my edited version. And then I'm repeating this whole process to my close-up shot. You don't want to go overboard with this editing because you want the image to remain true to colour. Last but not least, for my final edit, I add in my watermark and I get so many questions for this and basically I use this free app called Fonto and it's so convenient and easier to use than photoshopping a curved watermark. So again, I pull up the image that I want to edit. To add the text, tap anywhere on your image and the add text button will pop up and now I'm just typing in my Instagram handle which is at full that way if you haven't followed me already. Why are you not following that way? Oh my god, I waited so long to do that. 
Then after that, I just choose the color for my font. Normally, I go for black or white to keep things simple. Then going back to style again, and then hit the style option that's on top of the screen, and it'll bring you to this curving tool. So just toggle the curving tool until it fits your cuticle shape. The higher the number goes, the more concave the text becomes. So for this particular hand pose, the curve has to go upwards because my hand is in an upright position. So I'm just adjusting it to a higher negative value and then hit done and you will have something like this. And then of course, I adjust the size and the tilt and the colour of the watermark to fit to the area around my cuticles. For more precise adjustments, you can use the plus and minus sign to give that accurate adjustment. And then finally, I go back in to do some final adjustments until I'm happy with my result. So once I'm done, I just click the arrow button on the bottom right corner and hit save image as PNG because I find that the PNG resolutions are way sharper and smoother than JPEG. Now I'm just repeating everything for this image and here you have a time lapse. So once everything is finished, I usually wait until it's night time or about early afternoon the next day to post on Instagram. And yes, it's florals again. And yes, look at this cute Japanese emoticon keyboard. Like, oh my goodness, I cannot. It's so adorable. And that's it guys, I hope you found this video helpful and informative for you. I think it's very simple and it's great because you don't really have to spend additional money to buy equipment and lighting and umbrella lights and things like that. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and comment down below what other videos you'd like to see from me next. Don't forget to follow me on Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and Periscope. Alright, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video and as always, have a great week ahead. Bye!